Right. Let's just begin with what is on the front page of uh, the Star this morning. As we promised our viewers, we'll circle back with this. And I uh, mentioned this is a headlining story on the front <coughs> page of the Star. We want to hear from NASA members themselves. Uh, themselves, are they continuing with this particular swearing in of Kalonzo Musyoka, who missed it when we saw the crowd that really came out uh, in force uh, to Huru Park to observe and, of course, uh, uh, participate in the swearing in of Raila Odinga? Let's just begin with you, Boni Halwale. First of all, are you privy to this particular information? Um, I'm the deputy party leader of Fort Kenya, and I can confirm that as a party, we are not aware that there will be another round of uh, swearing in at Uhuru Park for anybody or anywhere else. My comment on this is that, uh, again, it speaks to the decision-making uh, mechanism within NASA. Just like as it has been voiced by very many uh, supporters of NASA, we're not too clear how decisions are made. I therefore would want to leave it there, but if it was a question of my personal opinion, then I would want to urge Fort Kenya members in particular, and NASA members in general, that uh, I am afraid it looks like the weight being put on swearing in is not best on what we would get out of the swearing in. Swearing in is a very expensive investment by way of the risk involved, the expectations of the people, and therefore it would require that such a, an expensive venture must attract clear returns. I'm afraid I don't see those returns because the oath that was taken on 30th, for example, Many of our people, especially in Kakamega, were expecting that upon being sworn in, our captain would then move to State House, be it in Kakamega, Mombasa, or Nairobi, and then he would dis be discharging as head of state. They have not seen it. That's why they are saying, form the cabinet quickly. Mm -hmm. We want to see our president uh, discharging. But unfortunately for them, that return can only come if there is legal and constitutional authority vested upon our leader. It, is, it doesn't seem to be forthcoming. So it leaves me afraid that probably what we are seeing is more of an attempt mm -hmm. on the part of our leaders to not only maintain their relevancy in politics, but also possibly reinvent themselves for future elections, something which I think should not be the real uh, driving force. Should that be the case, then uh, my thinking is that we are missing the point by many miles. The future of the politics of Kenya, to my mind, is going to be determined by three things. I see an attempt of strengthening of parties, both in government and in the opposition, being a serious agenda for many parties. I see parties wanting to look for fresh alliances in keeping with the tradition in Kenya that for every new general election, we normally go to it with a fresh configuration of alliances. And the last point I see is that the issue of pushing for a referendum that should bring in constitutional reforms will be the one that will be determining the politics from now onwards. All right. But the question would be then, uh, uh, we saw Kalonzo Musyoka missing on the swearing in and also as well as uh, some of the NASA principal, Musalem Davidi, of which he is, uh, you're not actually in his party, you, you're from Ford Kenya, but of course Wetangula is in your party as well. He never suffers on that day. Why should Kenya be drawn on this, you know, long drawn exercise about swearing in and you had the spotting chance to do that before, and you never showed up. We get uh, over with this and move on, right? Were they, first of all, prevailed upon by some of you 
who are the advisors of these uh, principles? Were they prevailed upon by the envoys who now they're really castigating in the first place? What was the threat? Because we have also information that coming to hand, first of all, that yes, some of them got gang shy because they have interest uh, without the countries where we know their foundations are being funded by some of these uh, uh, Western countries as well. And that also was sort of a risk for them, was it? Uh, I live in this country and I'm privileged to be part of the top leadership of NASA. I want to make it very clear to Kenyans that the debate on the swearing in, that debate has to be brought to an end. And the only way it can be brought to the end is that Honorable Raila Odinga, Honorable Kalonzo Musioka, Honorable Mseli Mdabadi, and Honorable Wetangula must individually and hopefully collectively find courage and face Kenyans and tell them the truth of what happened before and on 30th of June. Because of where I sit, I can assure Kenyans that none of them so far has told Kenyans the truth. If they do that, then the horizon is going to become much, much clearer. If I had been mandated by my party that on such a show mm -hmm. I speak to events leading to the 30th and what took place on 30th, I would make very many things clear. But at this stage, I want to encourage the four principles to come forward and tell Kenyans All the right. truth. All right. Let's hear from uh, Dr. Otende. First of all, is NASA a house of cards waiting to come? <laughs> because what we're hearing from uh, Boni Halwale seems that you people are not really together. Yeah? So there was a push and pull for this swearing in. Uh, some quarter of the, of the court they were for it, some quarter of the court were not really for it, first of all. And uh, we want to know from you and as well. Kalonza has been saying, yes, we will be sworn in as well. Uh, we don't know, he's not privy to this information, so I don't know how it's coming to the media. It seems the there's a mall within NASA who's leaking out this information. Are we facing a, a, a coalition that is just a facade waiting to crumble and uh, now you'll be frustrating large of your supporters as well? First of all, Dr. Halwale is my friend and has been my friend for very long. But I think these last seven months that uh, Jakoyo was talking about has done something <laughs> to him. <laughs> I know Dr. Halwale as my senior in politics uh, to be much more, you know, uh, clearer in certain ways than he sounds today. And um, So is it surprising I, to you I, as well? I, 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 I do not know. We will have this conversation further. But let me say that Dr. Halwale is bemoaning a hose that bolted. <laughs> that hose long bolted. We had a swearing in of the people's president, and we now have a people's president. Whether we'll also have a swearing in of the deputy people's president remains to be seen. That is not for me to answer here. There's an assumption of office committee, of which I'm not a member. So it is only they that can speak to, to this. Uh, I have seen... Uh, the papers seem to have two contradictory stories. Yes. Um, the NASA says one story, and if you look at star. the standard, star. The, the star, star says one story, the standard seems to say yet a different story. So personally, I don't want to go into that. Uh, uh, what I want to say is this, that the idea of swearing in was never about what Dr. Halwale is talking about. It was never about the legality. This thing is always about the legitimacy. And as long as the issue of legitimacy remains, Dr. Halwale, the, this issue will remain with us. There is no day. There is nothing like next week, next month. Now we will say we are over with the story of the presidency. Let us move on. We will not. Because as long as there are issues of illegitimacy, they will remain either until they are properly addressed, and I agree with Jacob Omidio, that there's a lot to address around electoral justice, and we can speak to that. But they will always remain. You cannot wish them. In fact, this is an inversion of the table. Senator Chereru will say, let us accept and move on. <laughs> on this one, we are not accepting and we're not moving on anywhere. <laughs> because there are issues of legitimacy, and they will remain. And as long as they remain, you can uh, maintain the legality of it, while you must allow us the space to maintain the legitimacy of it. And that is why we are coming to the third phase where we are talking about the People's Assembly. The whole issue of legitimacy and the sovereignty of the people in Article 1 then find space in such as what happened 
uh, at Huru Park, and you saw those massive numbers. That speaks to legitimacy. It happens when then you have the various uh, county assemblies coming together, together with the people and other representatives in the format of the People's Assembly. So it is true that we are now going to start narrowing this into the issue of the People's Assembly because there are things that the law can force you to do, but there are things the law cannot force you to do. The law can force you to stay with your wife. In fact, the law can force you to have conjugal rights, but the law will not accept, uh, force you to accept you know, so the law can force you, can say, this is now what it is, this election is over, but the legitimacy will always be there. So what I know, and that is where we are, is that everything that is being done is being done within the law. And as long as we are doing it within the law, you must also allow the space to insist on the illegitimacy of what you do not agree with, not necessarily the legality of it, because the legality was, you know, went through the Supreme Court. But the legitimacy issue will remain. It is that question of legitimacy that has even earned us what we have in this country. If it was simply to accept what the law says, we would not have independence. The law at that time was that we were being governed from the UK by a colonial governor. Right. But the people of this country said, no, 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 no. Right. The but legitimacy. Question will be then, what, what are the metrics that you use to decide the, the legitimacy of a presidency? What are the metrics? Well, right. is, it, is it anywhere codified in the law? Yes. Right. Uh, what is the legitimacy? Is it because you see a huge populace or maybe uh, people are coming out in force uh, to Huru Park, then you say these are the people, then it means we, the country is divided. W what are the metrics that, that you use? That is the starting point, uh, Dibao. When a people accept something, you see it in their action. When they do not accept, <coughs> you also see it in their action. So the starting point is just what you saw. If you see those numbers, that came to Uhuru Park, despite all the warnings by the police, the dangers of death, the dangers of being maimed and tear gassed, it tells you something. It tells you that is the first parameter. But it's not just something that somebody wakes up and starts with. There's a channel, there's a history to it. The first issue is the legitimacy comes from having free, fair elections. If you do not set up the mechanism with which you can have a free, fair and legitimate elections, then you must expect that the outcome will not meet the full test of legitimacy. That legitimacy test comes in terms of the actions of the relevant parties. In this case, the IB, for example, IBC. Mm -hmm. We know what happened before August. We know what happened after August. We know what led to two-thirds of this country not deciding not to participate in election. When two-thirds of the registered voters decide not to participate, it means they are voting by refusal. It means the outcome will always face the question of thank legitimacy. You. Right, thank you. Let, let's hear from Mayor Cheriot. You, you hold with his view. <laughs> you know, um, Dr. Otiende is a, is a good gentleman. He's a good friend and also someone that I hold in high regard. But uh, unfortunately, he's uh, choosing to be intellectually dishonest with you this morning. As one of the people who drafted this constitution, he knows the answer to the question that you asked him. What are the metrics? in determining a legitimately elected president. He knows them off his head. But do you know why he cannot give you? It's because he's playing politics. And there is Otiende, the lawyer, who knows the, two of, uh, the truth of what you're asking him. And there is him, the politician, who has a base and has the people of Rarieda to speak for. And that is what he's doing this morning. Let me tell you something, Dibal, that is very uh, interesting. Listening to uh, Senator uh, Boni Halwale, a very senior figure in uh, NASA, uh, Dr. Otiende, and I'm sure even when Jacques is done to speak will come, you'll realize that what you have in NASA is similar to the biblical uh, Tower of Babel, where everybody, there is this grand plan to do something magnanimous that has never been done before, but then as time goes by, everybody begins to speak their own language and you don't have anything to, to, to write home about anymore. In the house of NASA, I can assure you that this is a house that has uh, so many people speaking different things, that even amongst its own base of supporters, as Senator Boni has uh, accurately opined, they do not know where they're going any, 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 anymore. Because, I didn't say that. Listen, <laughs> this is my interpretation of what you're saying. Because <coughs> when you say our supporters are beginning to ask us, please speak and give us a clear direction. And for sure they do, even their own leaders. <laughs> we sit in parliament with many of uh, the NASA MPs, and there are many things they do not agree with. 
one of the things is this uh, issue that has brought this discussion, where Kalonzo now says, I am ready to be sworn in after avoiding it so spectacularly on the 30th of, uh, of, uh, of January, as happened on that day. I want to assure uh, uh, Senator Boni that there is so much fire that you are yet to see in, uh, in, in, in NASA than you have seen even before. Perhaps even before the end of this week, if NASA uh, senators, not NASA, ODM senators, are to have their way, your party leader may find himself stripped of his position of leader of uh, minority. That is the language they are speaking. Is and it? they say it so, it so much in public. Go to the records of the Hansard. That is the challenge that is within NASA as, is, uh, as things are. Perhaps what uh, Kalonzo is trying to do, Debal, mm -hmm. is to achieve two things. One, he's trying to re-engineer his politics after the spectacular failure of uh, the 30th of, of January. To appease his home base of Ukambani, <coughs> where you've seen, uh, have seen videos on social media circulating, where many young leaders are beginning to speak and say, look at this man, you have made us the laughing stock of a country. People are now beginning to brand us. And you know the Kenyan, the fabric of our, of our society, where uh, the tribal tag is so strong that you cannot run away from it. And they are saying, please pave way for new bold leadership that can speak and rhyme with the base of, 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 of this country. The second group of people that uh, Kalonzo Musioka is trying to please is now the general uh, NASA populace that are completely disappointed uh, with him. You saw it on 30th, you have seen it on social media. I have seen, and this is not to confirm or to say that there is anything serious that will be <coughs> But I have seen many times and I listen to many of uh, my friends who are NASA supporters miss out and say, we wish and long for a time where we had a deputy to Raila Odinga who was more courageous and more convincing. And they see that in the persona of none other than the deputy president. And they say, we miss his days when he was uh, in our camp because we'll never have had this kind of games that you're experiencing now. Unfortunately, as uh, Dr. Obtien likes to put it, that uh, horse has bolted and it has left us. So they have to deal with this uh, problem before we can even go into the politics of... Uh, whether we want to discuss electoral justice and, uh, and, and all these other things, I think the next coming few days and months will be very critical for NASA because for them even to agree and just tell Kenyans the truth about what happened on 30th of January, it will be a tall order for them. They may never live to, to tell that story. They may never live. So you, uh, so you say NASA now is the Tower of Babel. Everyone is speaking their own language. Uh, it seems now uh, no one just will be give Jacob the chance to speak. You will hear. Okay, it but will be totally <laughs> different. From so, <laughs> so everyone has gotten a gift of tongue here. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> what what is the <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Let's hear from uh, Jacob Medio, right? First of all, a uh, few things, uh, Deba. You know, Saint Chariot seems to be speaking for me. He has, he has <laughs> predicted what I predicted what I'm going to say without saying <laughs> that NASA was a vehicle for elections. And NASA is not a political party. And by the way, Senator, I was an independent candidate. Those people in NASA, some of them colluded to rob me oh. of, my, uh, of my nomination certificate. So I was an independent candidate. So as I talk, I want to talk sense. Mm. First of all, the 30th of January made Raila Odinga the greatest hero in Africa. <laughs> but the bravest man in Kenya. And I can tell you, if elections were coming this August, like they have asked, NASA has already done its nominations on the 30th. Because Raila was carrying too much baggage. Really, let call a spade a spade. You know, when we leave to go to war, you must go with soldiers who you don't have to look behind you. And the 30th... Uh, of January was the coronation of Raila as the ultimate leader, as the Mahatma Gandhi of Kenya, as the Ayatollah of Kenya, mm -hmm. the way I see it as a politician. He is a brave man. I don't even think uh, there are very few people that, uh, very, there, are, there is anybody that can compare with him after the 30th. He was, I think he needed these other principles to uh, uh, cross the Rubicon. Mm -hmm. And they deserted him. They call a spade a spade. Now he has crossed the Rubicon alone. Mm -hmm. He still, it seems when I see him talking, he still wants to uh, carry them along. But the truth is, in the eye of the ordinary person, 
watching like Jacoyo Medio. There is only one leader living in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this. The more we talk about swearing in, the more we are missing the point. Because I think there is an action on the part of Jubilee. I think that the problem is not in NASA. The problem is in Jubilee. Because what are we doing, uh, uh, when you saw the other day in uh, Kitui County, mm -hmm. lorries is being burnt, the people who have gone to collect charcoal, just because they belong to Kikuyus. Which country are we molding in this, uh, you know, this is 21st century. Mm -hmm. We should be getting away, uh, getting rid of our negatives as a people. Th that uh, politicians want to keep it at political level and not talk about the issues, I find it absurd. I find that it is not going to uh, move us forward. I want to say this. After the 30th of January, I think it's a good time for Uhuru and Raila to understand that they hold the future in this country, of this country in their hands. And I would beg that the envoys, the foreign envoys, keep away from it because we know what they are trying to do. I actually happen to understand that uh, the, the colonial tactics that they are trying to, um, um, to apply. And it would be wrong. It would be absurd to accept. Because when Kenyans were being killed, mm -hmm. the envoys were quiet. I mean, why do you <coughs> kill people just because Raila has come from Germany? Why? The country is so deeply divided that I think people need to move at a higher level on a greater pedestal to restore sanity in our country. All right. Let, let's hear from Boris Halwale. I think it is becoming uh, very clear that uh, on a debate like this one, one cannot firmly say, I am the one who is right, or so and so is wrong. The truth be told, the words used by Dr. Otienda Omola, we need to simplify them to Kenyans. He's telling us, and I agree with him 100%, putting it in my own way, President Uhuru is legally the president of Kenya. But please, people of Jubilee, you better accept it. He lacks the legitimacy that is required for him to have the total control of the country and move the agenda of the country. He lacks the legitimacy. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, Raila Odinga is the people's president, but he lacks the legal authority to execute any government agenda. That is a stalemate. Being a stalemate, it therefore says there is that which Raila has which he can contribute to this country that Uhuru doesn't have and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So what is legitimacy and what is legality? Uh, it is legal that President Uhuru is the president of Kenya because you can use legal points to defend him. That he was sworn in, the so-called, the, 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 the swearing in was done by the chief justice uh, and the protocol was as it is defined in the constitution and so and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it is legal. But what do we mean by it not being legitimate? Put it in the layman's language. If, for example, a man is polygamous and from the first marriage mm -hmm. he has got three children and then the mother of the first marriage is not a rich woman, she is an ordinary villager. Yes. But his second wife, who has no child, is the high class woman who looks very attractive. And these children are at a parade at a primary school. When this man visits these children with his high class second wife, and the ch together with his the solo so called village. First, uh, first wife, when the children are asked to come and identify their mother, this man might want a situation whereby he looks sophisticated by his children coming and identifying with his second wife. But because she's not legitimately the mother of these children, when the children will come, 
dirty as the first wife might be, they'll go where their mother is. Because legitimately, she is their mother. It should worry Jubilee that on the big day of Uhuru telling the world that I'm now the president of Kenya, nobody came to Kasarani. And when Raila was struggling to come and say that I'm the president, there was no space to stand at Uhuru Park. That speaks to the issue of legitimacy. So where do we go from here? It is not to dismiss Uhuru. It is not to dismiss Raila. It is to accept that they both have something to give Kenya, and therefore the brave leader is not the one who is going to call another one a coward. Is the one who is going to accept that reality so that we take our country into dialogue. Even the first world war, the second world war, they were ended by dialogue. Right. Even Mandela in South Africa, he was forced to talk to the clerk for the country to come out of apartheid. So we at NASA who are urging our leader, Raila Dinga, to talk to Uhuru is not because we are foolish or we are being cowardly. We are realizing that the stalemate will only be broken by people talking. People must talk. If we don't talk, we are preparing for the country to clash. Right, but and we, supposing, yes, we, my brothers, the country clashes, people clash. Who is this that you want to fight each other? All right, good question. But of course, when we're talking about uh, dialogue, we, we have dialogue, we have the swearing in that is being touted about now with this one, new development as well, new moving on uh, with the people assemblies as well in this country. That is a plan in the pipeline. But you hear also yes. there is a notion of a dialogue. But we have one uh, conditionality, which is a tripping word to this dialogue as well, which is the electoral reforms, of which NASA, they do not want to hear, or maybe Jubilee, I should say, they do want to hear anything about uh, elections. You know, he says, of course, if you're talking about the big four agenda, these are the issues on the table that we want to discuss. So are we talking here of... Uh, a negotiation without conditions or a negotiation that has also conditionalities that have to be met that this has to be off the table this will be the itemized you know uh, documents or suggestions of uh, uh, topical issues that we'll be negotiating on let's say from uh, dr attender or you want to i want to comment something very briefly that. jubilee is being dishonest to this extent that the only condition you need for dialogue is to identify an arbiter or a panel of such a interlocutors. Once you have that panel, either side will come with its demands. At the beginning, the demands don't have to be agreed on. The fact that either side has got demands marks the beginning of dialogue. It might very well be that in the process of the dialogue, the outcome might be that we have an election before 2022. Thank you. Let's hear from uh, Sorry. Dr. Otiende. Dr. Halwale has, in more recent moments, started to sound the way he used to. Exactly. <laughs> I think I, it, it must be, must be some <laughs> coffee <laughs> that, we, that he has taken. Um, where we are, and this is where I closed last week's uh, comment, mm -hmm. that as a country we stand at a precipice and we have the choice of looking back to see what we can salvage or plunging. Yes. And the more I look around, the more we are prepared to plunge. There are commentators who think they are helping, but they are worsening the situation. Mm -hmm. When I listen to the diplomats, they are worsening the situation because they did not speak when they needed to speak. And when they spoke, they took partisan positions rather than independent positions. That <coughs> could help anyone. And therefore, at this stage, when they try to speak, instead of helping, they are worsening the situation. They would rather just keep quiet. We have the church that long took partisan routes and who even now are being factionally controlled. So while they stand for God and godly matters, they are unable to help us with the worldly problems. And so they can't help us. We have a serious sh shortage of statesmen in this country, including the former presidents, who instead of perhaps rising above the partisan politics when it was critical, mm -hmm. so that when they are needed, people can run to them, they sank to the dust of the matter. And so no one can go to them. 
We have parliament, which ordinarily should come in at a time like now. Mm -hmm. But I think we all know, and all of us here serving parliamentarians and former parliamentarians know that parliament is fully captured. And it is captured now more than ever before, so completely that we even have a headline that is now asking whether parliament will fight for its freedom. And yet that freedom is constitutionally given, is constitutional guaranteed. So parliament will not help us. So who will help us? You know, that is the question. Now, secondly, the most unfortunate thing is those who believe, belong to the Jubilee regime think that if you muzzle voices, if you show clothes that are tyrannical, then it will stop people from saying there's a problem. And therefore, they decide on actions like, let us strip all the NASA principles of their security. That was long done. It has not changed anything. Mm -hmm. Let us strip all the NASA MPs of their security and all their goodies so that you're in parliament and your colleagues have all those goodies you don't. And they think that that will bring us together. That can only tear us apart. You have situations where those in that regime believe that the more you exclude those who have NASA affiliation, mm -hmm. the better it gets. So you get a cabinet which is 55% from two tribes of this country. You get a cabinet which, out of slighting of parliament, they even decide that you don't need those who served earlier to be uh, approved by parliament. Yet the constitution and the law is different. Everybody must be approved. You know, you get a situation where you create situations like chief administrative secretary, which is unconstitutional, but believe that that is the only way to consolidate your area. Instead of pulling any nearer, we are pulling further apart. I think that the mistake uh, that uh, we all make as leaders sometimes is to believe that as long as you are safely within your cocoon, then there's no problem elsewhere. The historical problem of this country, which is so fundamental, and sometimes it's said, sometimes it is, it is muzzled, and it is not hate speech, that as long as we have a country which everything in terms of political power is only controlled from two regions, then we will always have a problem. We will start solving the problem the moment it is accepted that there's a problem and let us talk fundamentally about it without conditions like accept this, accept that, no. But as long as we don't, then we will always have a problem. And the starting point, and I want to urge my colleagues in parliament, that one of the institutions that might help us if we reclaim our freedom is parliament. But as long as parliament is reduced to a robotics of voting and not reason, then we will not help this country. All right, but is the public domain that, yes, we do have a problem, as it is right now. And uh, largely people agree there is a crisis uh, and the divide which is, which is there. And we cannot, it's not, uh, we cannot gain say the fact that they, there, is, there is a problem. But the question is, do we need to document this problem? When we just come and we have these particular shows and we talk about it, then what discernible difference are we really making if after this life just moves on? Right? How do we actually come out from this morass that we have, uh, you, know, uh, you know, apportioned ourselves into? Well, uh, Debal, you know, I, I, I do not think uh, crisis is uh, the apt word to use in this situation. Basically, what we have as a country is that uh, our politics is broken, and uh, members of the public can see it, and they can read through our politics and realize that there's something that is not right, but they do not seem to read it from the level of uh, <coughs> the political class that uh, most of us here on this table belong to. They tend to look at it and say these are people who are ordinarily friends. They share so many uh, things together. They take their kids to the same school. They enjoy uh, the same social uh, places. But at this point where they've disagreed on how to share state power and uh, certain resources, they are now coming back to us as a populace to come and uh, whip up emotions and say, please do not consider uh, so-and-so to, uh, to be members of, 
of uh, to, to be the leaders, uh, the genuine leaders of his country, and that kind of thinking. Let me tell you uh, something, uh, Dipal. I hear Dr. Boni Halwale uh, speak and says, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta lacks the legitimacy. I don't think uh, he is accurate in his, um, in, in his wording because legitimacy is about conformity to set out rules. You know, it's about uh, the, uh, logic and justification. And when you measure the presidency of Uhuru Kenyatta against all that, he meets all those uh, requirements. The thing that NASA have succeeded in denying Uhuru Kenyatta is a level of acceptance in certain regions of this country, which is uh, really unfortunate because... Majority of the regions. No, no, no. It cannot be majority, Boni Halwale, because I want to remind you that Jubilee, the party that President Kenyatta uh, leads, has elected leaders in 41 out of 47 counties in this country. Can that be, can that be a minority? 41 out of 47. President Kenyatta, you have succeeded to deny him level of acceptance and you have sold propaganda to uh, certain uh, sections of this country which is really unfortunate because if NASA leaders wants us to be sincere and genuine and have a discussion about how to move this country forward there are so many problems that we can uh, confront and uh, discuss about but the reason why we have taken the stand that we have taken as a party is that we've said there is no country that industrializes. There is no country that develops by politicking 24-7. If it is a discussion about who occupies which office and where, that discussion is, is settled. But, but if it but, is but a no, discussion... No, no, just, just, let, uh, just, let, let, let me intervene. But if you say that we have our, our, poli our politics is broken, yeah. don't you think we need to fix the, the, the broken politics before now we move to industrialization? No, fix the broken politicians. That will not, create an, in, an enabling environment, isn't it? You, you see, Dibal, and that is the point that I was coming to. What, our politics shouldn't be about our positions as leaders. It should be about the problems and the needs. You know, the unemployed young people, the people that are going to bed angry uh, angry and hungry on each and every night yet they are our constituents those are the discussions that you are telling uh, our colleagues in nasa that you are willing to entertain and listen to the question that you should be able to measure against jubilee is to ask uh, of president uhuru kenyatta on these signature programs that you're carrying out this big agenda for how is rarieda for example for dr otiende here going to benefit for the people that he, he, he is representing. And you go back and do a reading of history. I remember one afternoon, we were together with the <coughs> Senator Boni Halwale here in, uh, in Senate, last parliament, and he rose to seek, uh, during question time, to seek information on uh, one of Jubilee's signatures uh, program last, 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 uh, last term, that is a last mile program. And he wanted to know the extent to which this program was being rolled out uh, across the different uh, parts of the country. At that point, when he was seeking that question, NASA leadership was selling the kind of propaganda that they are selling this morning, that this program was only being run in certain parts of the country. He got a very elaborate answer, and if I do remember, and Dr. Boni, uh, you're my witness, out of the 900 or so primary schools in Kakamega, the county that he represented, about six or 700 had already be con been connected to the, to the national grid, and the problem was the same generally everywhere. So the question is, Dibal, mm -hmm. you should be asking of uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta, how can you ensure that you uplift the lives of each and every Kenyan, uh, despite of their po uh, political leaning, uh, not considering where they voted in the last general election. Those are the questions that we need. When you, when you speak about dialogue, just a final point, allow me to say uh, this. Dialogue is ongoing each and every day in this country. We are currently reviewing our education system. There's a debate that is ongoing, very alive and active. But you know what? Among you know what, all no, no, no. You know all, what all dialogue you're talking about. That no, is no, 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 no. Leave, no, no. You, you know, yes. the problem the Bal have always told you mm -hmm. is that we come here and want to discuss elitist problems that end with us at the elitist table. Let us discuss real issues that are affecting the ordinary Kenyan. Thank you. Education is a problem. Uh, joblessness among our youth. Those are the things that... Thank you. Let's hear from Jacob Mido. Uh, very well, briefly. When my young senator here says the politics is broken and then runs away, say fix politicians and don't fix the politics. That is not good use of airtime, my young senator. Airtime is when you say problems. You know, what NASA is asking is basic. They're saying, let's seek electoral reforms. Let's agree on police reforms. In which country, civilized on earth, do you have policemen shooting people at will? In the standard today, there is a, a, a story of how 
five people were shot in Kisumu, three killed, just because Meguna Meguna, uh, you know, one of our panelists. In which country does a mysterious being switch off media? Which country? We have a problem. In fact, I saw somewhere, even in Somalia, it has never happened. Even in Chad, <laughs> even in Sudan, you know, switching off a public good, which the law actually spells out very clearly, do not touch, do not interfere with. Now, I want to tell, uh, first of all, let me welcome Wamatangi, Spole, for the mess up. Yeah. But uh, I know you as a disciplined man, you, have, you <laughs> shall overcome, or you have overcome. You are here. <laughs> let me tell you. Yeah. I said here last week that a government headed by a man from central province should not allow police brutality when Kenneth Matiba is still on his deathbed. And I can tell you, it shall come to haunt. The moment we don't deal with these issues, Matangi, I sent you to your people last week. <laughs> the government headed by the son of Kenyatta must not allow police brutality. The things which were happening to Miguna Miguna. Right. When it is headed, when Kenneth Matiba is still sick. Now, you gave yeah, them so much time. Yeah, yeah, it's still sick, yeah, I know. But yeah. uh, you're using the death, deathbed statement, I think that... Uh, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Muse, but, Muse, Muse but, has really suffered. But this is now... now uh, well, well, if, if it's you know, fresh from me, let me withdraw that. Please, but, let me say, yes. but I saw the other day, when people were demonstrating on the streets, police was killing people, and President Uru Kenyatta was on Mateba's uh, uh, bedside. Yes. That contradiction I cannot understand from a leader. I cannot understand that because Matiba is in vegetative state because of police. And the two, some of the people who he is hanging out with are the same people who watched when Matiba was being made in that condition. That position is not acceptable. I want to tell you, you know, these people are busy destroying an economy. But the people destroying this economy, their investments are outside the country. They have property in London, they have property in the US, they do big business. Some of the, the, high, the big people in government today are overly investing in Dubai today. When this economy comes down, the rest of us and our grandchildren and grand-grandchildren will be left in a, a state that looks like Somalia. I think it is onerous that the leaders, the leadership of this country, must talk. That has not, when you talk about, I don't know, four-point development agenda, and you're already $40 billion in debt. We are $40 billion in debt. I saw they are still borrowing $26 billion. $25 billion. $25 billion to put a, an electric line on SGR. Theft. Open theft. Something is wrong with our country. We must stop and look behind the yeah, debate. <coughs> what, what, what we are doing here is just semantics. You can't tell us that a judge can order an IG, just Inspector General of Police, mm -hmm. to appear in court, and he just refuses. Four times. Four times. You know, what, which, which country is this? I, I mean, is anybody above the law? Mm -hmm. who, who is this cheating these people that anybody will be scared? Let me tell you something, Senator Chiriot. Mm. This word legitimacy, I used it before the 26th of October. And I said here last week, if somebody was smart around you people, they should have convinced those other people to drop aside, and we would be in a much better position if Uhuru had been an automatic president. But because he chose to go to an election which delegitimized his presidency, 3.5 million people only voted out of 19 million voters. Mm -hmm. It means that 16 million Kenyans don't want us to go this direction. And what do leaders do? See, politics, you know, we are here to politic, and we politic to change the lives of our people. This is not, you know, when you have a cabinet, and we are saying, let's talk, meet to talk about uh, uh, inclusivity. And the cabinet is already 55% two tribes, in a country of 42 tribes. Mm -hmm. What are you telling Kenyans? Right. Let's hear from uh, Wamatangi. Good morning, Wamatangi. Thank you for joining us. I'll be uh, a, a little bit late. Thank, thank you, yeah, Diban. And uh, let me 
traditionally say good morning to our viewers. Also, welcome Bonnie Galoale. I'm excited and happy to see him after missing in action for long. And uh, Dibal also. Uh, let, let me. to Damascus. He was taken by a light and he changed the car. Canon or not? I was just welcoming him. He was going to Canon from afar. I don't know. You know, anyway, Karibu <laughs> Bullfighter. I, I know you've had a few deals with the, the bulls of. Uh, of, of uh, Kakamega. You know, Kakamega there. Uh, so, <laughs> Karibu back. And uh, my, my, my good friend here, uh, Jokoyo Medio. Uh, you know, actually this morning, it's, it's not me who had, uh, who had a mishap. I had gone to rescue a friend who had an accident on, on Jogo Road. And the ball can uh, actually attest to the fact that I was here earlier than all of you. <laughs> 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 but then I was called when uh, the person had a fatal accident and I had to go and rescue them and take them to Nairobi Hospital. So I'm here. And uh, I'm sure uh, Dr. Otienda Amolo, I was listening to him even I was coming, and uh, my colleagues, and I'm sure they've had a field day. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Aero Chariot has been holding uh, the fort for you. Run, trying to run it down on Chariot, but, 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 but Chariot is a man and a half. I mean, he's, he's, yeah. he's been able to, <laughs> you know, to, 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 to shine truth <laughs> to all the lies, you know. No, you know, he really tried. I mean, I, 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 mean, I, 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 I give to it me. to him. <laughs> because I mean, you know, having to 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 to, to bring uh, truth, to speak truth, to all these, uh, you know, to three lies. canons <laughs> of lies. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> really, I mean, but uh, uh, very quick two things, yes. Bala, I want to say, uh, and uh, allow me to start from where Jacoyo stopped. I don't want to dwell a lot on that point that you that, that you raised on on the condition and circumstances under which Matiba uh, got into into the physical and health condition he is in now, but but we cannot forget the situation the country was in, the reasons why Matiba and many others took to the streets and to fight for our rebellion and also to fight for our rights. Th that cannot be lost. And and you see, we have to. Uh, to distinguish these two so that even our, our, our children will get to learn our history correctly. You know, there's a big distinction between then the reasons why Matiba and, and, and group went to liberators and now the reason why we have the situation that we have because we have inheritors of that, of that freedom that they fought for who are irresponsible. And, and this is the, the, that's the problem that we have. That, that those people went to fight for us to, to say the things we are saying today and to enjoy the political freedom we do, but, but unfortunately, that freedom now was bequeathed into the hands of people who don't know what to do with it. And, 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 and unfortunately, most of them are self-seekers. Others just want to have it their way. And, and, and uh, you, 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 you can't explain it in a better way as to why we are here. I mean, just, just take two quick points that were... That, that were said by Otiende Amolo. On first, really, about the question of parliament and parliamentarians, and, and trying to, uh, to lopside to show as though either government or Jubilee has anything to do with the situation that pa parliament finds itself right now. Let me ask you, if, if you show the world, show our children, Show every aspiring person who would want to go to that parliament that parliament is a place and a ground where people go to undress during debate and throw in awareness and, clo and clothes across the, 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 the plenary. If you show parliament that it is, it is a house where people, instead of going to talk, you go carrying whistles mm -hmm. to blow and, 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 and cause general mayhem and pandemonium, if you show people that parliament is, 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 is equivalent to the WWF uh, wrestling ring, if, 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 you, if you showed the world and even any other power that be, that, that the way you, you, you go about your business in parliament is once you are elected, or upon the advice of somebody who is outside of parliament, you are, said, you are told don't go to parliament to vote. Don't go to parliament to debate. Boycott sittings. Even when there is 
the cardinal duty right now of vetting uh, cabinet secretaries boycott, don't go to parliament. And then you blame the situation that you find the institution in. The institution, if, if those are the players themselves who are supposed to uphold that power and strengthen parliament, mm -hmm. then how do you expect to have a, a strong parliament? And, and, and so, you know, there is, there is no way we can try to argue. We, we, we have done it to ourselves mm -hmm. as parliamentarians. And, 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 and uh, this headline, uh, let me tell you, you know, uh, the ball is, as, as it shouts out loud, will House fight for its freedom? The House can't fight. It is these men. It is the women of Parliament who should stand up properly, legitimately, in knowledge of why they are there. And then <coughs> the Parliament can find itself. Thank you. Now, no, secondly and lastly, the ball, uh, this gentleman had a lot of time to talk. So let me say, yes. uh, <laughs> we were not in Jogoro. <laughs> let, let me say my thing. <laughs> you know, uh, I, would, I would want to quickly just touch on something that was said by, by, by uh, our new you know, friend in this new year, Bonnie Halawale, on the question of authority and legitimacy. But as I do so, I want to remind also Dr. Otiende Amolo that when a diplomat spoke out loud after NASA won the first round in the Supreme Court, they were very clear. They said to the president now, respect the law. If the court has annulled your election, follow what the court has said and go to the election. He obeyed. The church followed suit and told the president, the Supreme Court has annulled your election. Follow, follow the law. That's what he did. But after now the second round of the election, and he legitimately won, now the same same diplomats honestly pursuing exactly what they pursued then say now we have a legitimately elected president you people of nasa respect the law the church says the same thing now that is bad for nasa because unless it is a song sung to their tune and to the and and, and to the rhythm they want it becomes a bad song now my friend bonnie halwale legitimacy and authority are two worlds apart if you interpret them the way you interpret them. And I want to tell you one thing. You know, legitimacy in itself is, is, is synonymous with the authority because legitimacy is the practice and expression of that authority that you have gotten using the right, the right channels of the law. Thank you. And, and, and anybody can have authority. I have authority, uh, Bonnie. You have authority. I mean, it depends on what your authority you're talking about. But if it is the confusion of Na NASA that you would call uh, uh, authority, I mean, look at, look at the headlines that you have here uh, in, in the Star, saying Kalonzo to be sworn in on, the, on February 28th. And uh, Bonnie, you just referred a few minutes ago that, that there is somebody you are calling a people's president who you purported to have sworn in a few weeks ago after being sworn in to be a people's president one week later is calling for an election in August. I mean, ask yourself what confusion. Even if he was a people's Thank president, you. he doesn't even know All what right. term Thank a you. president is supposed to serve. And with the same voice and same breath on the same day, you are saying that you want dialogue, you want elections in August, and you have a deputy president being sworn in on February, August. I mean, what, to what extent do you want to confuse the country? Thank and, you. And, and, and we must say firmly, as leaders, that there is a point at which we have to depart from the confusion and say we have to reclaim the country. All right, thank you. I, I would love you also to comment as we were winding up uh, on the editorial cartoon that we have on page two of the star. And of course, this is uh, the new development in South Africa. Aren't we desirous of such politics that we know when they're talking about uh, uh, political, uh, uh, political fixing, that we have a bro broken politics? Look at what is happening in South Africa right now. That is Zuma being shown uh, the door, the exit door. And we know that ANC has demanded that he resigns within 48 hours. He will no longer be the president of South Africa. We're looking at a country where the politics and the, and the political parties in this country are not as strong and robust 
as the yes. African National Congress in South Africa, where a party can prevail upon you if you're not delivering, if you're scandalous, and if your administration has been plagued by, you know, so many scandals of uh, the Guptas and, uh, you know, the economy being sunk into a junky state as well, right? Maybe you can comment on this. Aren't we desirous as a country that we'll have political parties that have ideologies, that we have internal democracy in those particular parties that will actually hold the leaders that we've appointed as chairman of these parties accountable that when he does not deliver, you know, under the tag of Kanu, under the tag of Jubilee, under the tag of ODM, then we recall you back and we force you, we will prevail upon you to, to resign. Isn't this the state of a country that we want in this country? Bori Halwale? Briefly, as we're winding up, then uh, we just take maybe 30, 30 uh, closing remarks because we're really stuck for time. Th this is closing up. Yeah, then I, would rather, clo I would rather speak to my closing up. Please, 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 please. Yes, uh, my closing uh, but you can up. Co you can co comment on this as yes, well. Yes, I will. Please. On my closing up, I have two points. Eh? Uh, in response to Senator Jeru Yot. Senator, you have spoken to Rarieda leader who is here with us, concerning himself more with what Rarieda people get out of President Uhuru's agenda for issues. The point is this, and allow me to lecture you because you are my junior. <laughs> the primary function of parliament is budget. So you guys sit there, you tell us that we should concentrate on agenda four, and yet when now you are appropriating budget, you take 63 billion shillings, you take to Kiambu in Uhuru's backyard, and you take nothing to Homa Bay, you take nothing to Kakamega, and you expect the people of Kakamega County and Homa Bay and their leaders to say, we recognize this government it is doing a good job. Don't be surprised. I'm talking about actual projects. We have the Karemeru Dam in Kiambu. Sandra Matangi knows it. We have the Ruiru 2 dam, both dams cost a total of 41 billion shillings. And you expect the leaders from the Luo Nation, the Luya Nation, to cheer up when you are passing that kind of budget thanks to a tyranny of numbers? I'll stop it there. The second point is to my brother, uh, Jakoyo Midiwo. Midiwo, don't make me cry. Because you and I, we have stood out in the parliaments that we have served as people who tried as much as possible to move towards the truth. When now you tell the country that the only leader who is there, as far as you're concerned, if election was called, is Rael Odinga, are you being fair or you want to change to please the leader? If the people in South Africa, the ANC, were doing that, assume that Raila was Cyril Ramaphosa. They would, be not, they would not be pushing him out. It looks like from the time you become independent, you are, not, you are no longer being informed of the truth. Please go. <laughs> go and ask the leadership of NASA. We would like respect for all the four principles. Go and ask. You will be given a chance to respond. Go and ask them if I am lying. Thank you. Just a minute. If I'm lying, on the eve of the 30th, who was the agent that was sent by Antonio Coteres, the Secretary General of the UN, who set the four core principles at, at the home of one of the four principles <coughs> and persuaded them and they agreed on a position on the 30th? That's why the best I can say is I urge the four core principles to speak, not to belittle Raila, to belittle Mdabadi, Wetangula, or Kalonzo. Please, we want to move our country and not to please individuals. Right, Dr. Otende, very briefly. Uh, Senator Cheriot says that his people told him that uh, they wish Raila had a deputy like uh, the current deputy president. God forbid. Thank you, Nasa. because it means he recognizes our leader. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I can see he's trying to shift, no, but no, you're no, welcome. No, and you want no, everyone no, else no, to come. No, no, Thank no, you very much. Secondly, we will accept will Senator, Matangi. <laughs> Senator Matangi tells us that is the church and diplomats who told Uhuru Kenyatta to respect the court decision. That, ca that can even be said, speaks volume. Mm -hmm. Uhuru Kenyatta had sworn to respect the position the, the very first time. And so the question of being persuaded to respect it should not arise. But two things, so that we close. One, 
you cannot impose legitimacy. Legitimacy must be earned. Mm -hmm. So whether you, you deport others, whether you kill others, whether you withdraw the security, whether you deny us money, you will not impose legitimacy. If you engage, you might get it. If you don't, there is no way you'll ever get it in two-thirds of this country. Secondly, there is no contradiction in the people's president calling for fresh elections in August because it is meant to address that very first thing, that you have a choice. We can live this way for the five years or more, or we can agree to find ways of fixing our country, including by starting with legitimate elections, which will result in a legitimate you know, uh, regime, and then we also discuss the questions of the amendments we need to the Constitution, and there's only one I'll mention, and that is the answer to the South African issue. Ultimately, in the Committee of Experts, we had proposed a parliamentary system. I still believe that is what we need in this country. Thank, Thank you. you. Right, Senator. Well, uh, you, you know, I... I yes, accepted yes. to be lectured by Dr. Boni because by all definitions he's my senior and there's no friend. And, and a good friend of mine also so there's no debate about that but uh, uh, senior in, in African folklore they say sometimes a rat advises the elephant allow me to be the rat that advises you this please do that is do you know i know you're not a rat but uh, <laughs> i've said this african folklore you know that okay. uh, that there is a government delivery book called, um, I, I forget the accurate name, but I'll, I'll, I'll get a copy and hand it over to uh, Dr. Boni Anwale so that he can uh, find time to go through and see the programs that are being done by the Jubilee Administration in Kakamega County and the parts of the country that he mentioned where he claims that certain amounts of money are being used in uh, uh, certain favorable uh, regions. That is not accurate, and I'll, I'll, I'll make that promise. I'll hand Thank over you. the book. Just one, 30 seconds for that uh, South African. 20, 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Yeah. seconds. Yeah. If we want to uh, get to the levels of uh, party democracy, as we're observing in ANC, then it must begin to the, at the place where the voice of the voter during party primaries in uh, party elections are respected. Unfortunately, in uh, many of our political parties, save maybe for Jubilee alone, that is not the case. Jacobo Medio here is a perfect example of what happens in party uh, primaries. And uh, he's a good leader, but the reason why Thank he's you. not in parliament is because of the same problem. We are Thank you. We start for time. Uh, Jacob, you just quickly, Deval, Deval, I want Wamatangi to, next time, because of time, clarify to us this contradiction. Mm. The president obeyed the Supreme Court ruling, and he took the Bible to rule, um, he held the Bible when he took his oath to rule this country following the Constitution. At what level would the president keep quiet when his officers, the IG and uh, ordinary police uh, men, disobey the same courts that he claims to have obeyed? Lastly, Debal, let me tell Bonnie, the question about the 30th <coughs> was about Uhuru Park on the 30th. And the, uh, my comment about Raila stand, because he showed that he's the only man who can brave and is not a coward in this country. And I can tell you, he must get us out of his, this hole. Thank you. Yes. Senator, Senator Matangi, very briefly, 30 seconds. Yeah, sure, sure. I just wanted to quickly remind... Uh, 30 seconds. Uh, Bonnie Halole, that uh, in your county, in a place called Navaholo, which is a place you... I was talking about the government is establishing and actually building an institution called the Kenya School of Government, and that the Kakamega Kishimu, <laughs> Kishimu Road is under construction. <laughs> the road from Kakamega to Webuya and Kitale is under construction. There's 13 other roads. So there is no way you can, you can, you can, you can have it your way, my friend. The amount of work done in your area. So is that, is, that, is that for the benefit is, of the local monarchy, the Kenya School of Government? Absolutely. Or is it for, 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 for yes, sure. government so, administration? So, so that you can have, you, so that you can have knowledge devolved all the way. I mean, the, 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 there are projects that are done, big done there, right. including, do you know, just for, for purposes of the benefit of our viewers, that actually most county governments, their officials go for training to Kenya School of Government for them to know how to, to run. And that's going to be good for the county. The county of Kakamega was one of the counties that had but serious issues. In comparison to the dams during, that you say, the last, la, 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 in comparison to the dams, yeah. in comparison no, to the I dams mean, that yes, you I mean, in, 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 in their place, you remember, in the whole of that region, 
there are dams which have been put up, Thank road you. projects, and, and including <laughs> ones that have been put up. But lastly, lastly, Thank you, no, Thank you very much. You know, we need to wind up on this. But, but yeah. the point, no, no, the point I had wanted to make on, on that question you asked uh, no, no, about no, no. political parties, no, no, no. you know, I, I wanted I, I, to have a take on it. Next week, in fact, on, on political parties, Edibal, we must ensure that though we have strong political parties with ideology, that we don't go the way we went many years ago. In, uh, in uh, during the Kanu regime, when yeah. we had a monster of a party, we have to have just strong Thank parties, you. a strong party, but with strong institutional framework Thank to you. ensure that we accelerate our democracy. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. I really appreciate it. Of course, we'll have uh, continued on and on with this uh, particular discussion. And also information coming to hand right now is that South Africa uh, NC party has resolved to remove the scandal's tainted Jacob Zuma Hooray. as the head of state after marathon 13-hour talks.